I've been investing in the stock market and cryptocurrency for about 6 years now. I'm currently invested in over 20 companies, but what is the total value of my portfolio? What is happening folks, my name is Robbie and today I'm going to be breaking down my entire stocks, shares and cryptocurrency portfolio. I'll be talking Bitcoin, Apple, Amazon, Berkshire Hathaway and how much I hold in each of these companies and cryptocurrencies. But before I begin I would like to just mention that the whole purpose of these videos is transparency. I enjoy watching videos of people discussing what they're investing in, how much they're investing, what the return was. I think it's very interesting and a good way to learn about investment. So that's why I make these videos. Hopefully it gives someone some inspiration on either what to invest in or what not to invest in. Or even better, it might give someone that little kick that they need to start investing. I know a lot of people who watch my videos on TikTok and YouTube are at the early stages of their investment journey, so this is to sort of encourage people to get started as well. As long as people find them interesting and keep watching, I'll keep making them. So if you do like this style of videos, remember to hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and subscribe to the channel for future videos about business, finance, investment, cryptocurrency, and all sorts of other things. And the final point to make is this is my investment portfolio of stocks, shares and cryptocurrency. I also invest in other asset classes like property, watches and whiskey, for example. If you'd like to hear about my other investments outside stocks and shares, let me know in the comments. Now let's get straight into the portfolio. Section one, as always, is index funds. This is where I keep the bulk of my portfolio just now and probably will always keep the bulk of my portfolio here. No newcomers this quarter and I haven't sold off any holdings, so I'll just get straight into it, starting from the bottom. Germany All Cap Fund, sitting at 995 pounds and 92 pence. And that's down 37 pounds and 20 pence. FTSE 250, 1,241 pounds and 46 pence. That's up 77 pounds and 88 pence in the last three months. Emerging Markets Index Fund, 2,520 pounds and 60 pence. That's up just over 4% in the last quarter. And the big one, the S&P 500, currently standing at 52,622 pounds and 70 pence. That's up 9.86% in the last three months. I also have a little bit of cash in that account of £88.89. The reason that I include that in the portfolio updates is just because it's already in my stocks and shares ISA and it will be invested eventually. So that puts index funds at a total of £57,469.17 and that's up 9% in the last three months. So looking at those numbers, index funds have performed extremely well in the past three months. But it needs to be mentioned that in the past three months, I deposited around four or five thousand pounds into the stocks and shares ISA that I use for index funds. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was between four and five thousand. But overall, including deposits, it has gone up by just shy of five thousand pounds total. But did the other two categories go up in value? Probably not as much as index funds did because I didn't deposit any money into them. Individual stocks is up next. Because there's about 24, I think, individual companies here, I'm just going to list them off one by one with a running total that you can see on screen. Warner Brothers Discovery, £25.56, down 10%, but that only equates to £3.06. Evraz, shouldn't have actually changed. I think that trading is still halted on this because it's a Russian company, but currency fluctuations make the price change on my portfolio. Currently sitting at £59.76, that's up £2.18. Corsair, £92.61. Currently down £19.08 for the quarter, that's 17%. Persimmon, £98.29, up £11.19 in the last quarter. Scottish Mortgage Trust, up £1.01 to £147.53. I know these numbers don't seem exciting, it's because we're in low values, believe me, I know that. A fluctuation of £3 is not exciting, but that's that's investing, it's not exactly the most exciting thing in the world. AT&T, £160.09, down £3.07 in the last quarter. Bank of Scotland, £1.20 down. UK Commercial Property Trust, £160.15, and that's up 16.89% in the last quarter. Imperial Brands, £192.53, up 84 pence in a quarter. Three months, I made 84 pence. Shell, £255.45, up £31.90, which is about 14%. BP, £266.64, and that's up £41 in the last three months, which is 18%. Hello, 
if you're in personal name, you could be looking at between this and this. No worries, mate. Right, Hello everyone, I'm just interrupting this video for a quick plug. If you're watching this video, you probably already know who I am, but for the benefit of those who don't, I'm Robbie and I'm a specialist finance broker. This means I help property investors, property developers and small to medium business owners with funding on their projects. That's buy to let mortgages, bridging loans, buy to let mortgages for portfolios, development finance and commercial mortgages. If you're a property developer, investor or business owner, email me on this email address or send me a direct message on Instagram to find out how I can help you. Right, plugs over, back to the video. IAG £278.99, pence, down £25.29. Pence. Warehouse Riot £517.79, pence, up 2.63%. Berkshire Hathaway £574.32, pence, up 6.92%, which equates to about £37. Here's a good one, Procter & Gamble. £597.98 and in the past three months it is up 52 pence, which is 0.09%. Wow. American Express, £611.75, down £73.99. That's just shy of 11% drop. Apple, just released the MacBook Pro M3 yesterday, so hopefully the prices went up since then, but as it stands for this month's portfolio update, £841.68, which is a drop of 8% in the last quarter, which is quite disappointing from Apple. Netflix, £922.90, down £117.77 in the last three months, which is 11%. Starbucks, my favourite, £964.58, down £49.59, which is 4.89%. Facebook is up £76.95 to £980.93, and that's an 8.51% jump. Amazon, the first individual stock to break £1,000 in this portfolio update, £2,082.48, and that is up £29.66 in the last quarter. Google, the best performing stock in terms of monetary value in the last three months, £2,144.13, up £258.02, which is 13.68% in the last three months. And there are two other companies that every single portfolio update, I have told you that they are secret companies, but I have since made a video, so go and visit my channel to watch the video about these companies. These are not publicly traded companies, so the stock price is difficult to put a number on. So I'm just valuing them at the price that I bought them for. The first company is Nothing, technology company. £2,921.48. That is how much I invested and that is how much I am putting the value as for now. And Chip, a fintech company, £3,001.24. And again, that is how much I invested in that company. So until they are either publicly traded, bankrupt or acquired, that's the price that we'll apply to them. I also have my free trade account. In this account, I currently have £209.52. And I also have £72.61 across my Hargreaves, Lansdowne account, eToro account and free trade account. This brings the total for individual stocks to £18,181.99. And that's an increase of £100.44 since July, or 0.56%. So the portfolio is now sitting at £75,651.16. And we're now going into the most volatile category every single quarter, cryptocurrency. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, particularly the portfolio updates, you'd know that I have a fair chunk of my cryptocurrency tied up in a company called BlockFi who are now bankrupt. And with that, most of my cryptocurrency could be gone. I've mentioned this the last few portfolio updates, but I'm basing these prices on current market values. If or when it's confirmed that my cryptocurrency is completely gone from BlockFi, then the portfolio will take a hit and I'll stop including them in the portfolio. But until then, I'll base the portfolio updates on current prices. Although I did receive an email last week advising me that BlockFi are now on the way out of bankruptcy. They're trying to recover funds from FTX among some other companies and hopefully we'll be paying it out to clients. So maybe I'll get some of my money back. Maybe I won't. Who knows? So starting from the bottom in cryptocurrency, we have Ripple currently sitting at £194.46, and that is up 11.83%, which is £20.57. Next up is Floki Inu, hands down, the stupidest investment I've ever made. Stupidest I don't even think is a word, but this was the worst investment I've ever made. It was so much on a whim, I got caught up in the hype of cryptocurrency, and 
couple of my mates chucked some money in and I thought I would do the same. That's not how to invest. Don't do that. It's currently sitting at £224. That's a drop of 27.52% on the last quarter. But more importantly, it's a drop of about 99% since I invested. Don't invest in something just because your friends are. It's very silly. My second biggest crypto holding is Ethereum. £2,729.99 and that experienced a drop of 9.29% or £279. And finally, the big one, the one I actually like for now until it disappears off BlockFi, Bitcoin. My Bitcoin holdings are currently sitting at £17,652.75. That's a 7.72% drop from last quarter, which is £1,476.84 drop. So that was less than ideal. But since it's all tied up in BlockFi for the foreseeable future, it actually makes no difference to my life because as far as I'm concerned, I don't have it anyway. But that brings the total for cryptocurrency to £20,799.20, a 27.52% drop on last quarter, meaning only two of the three categories actually went up in value in the last three months. But as long as the portfolio went up in value overall, I'm happy. So you've probably kept a keen eye on the bottom corner of this video, tallying up the total value of the portfolio. And this video has taken us right up to £96,450.36. A small increase of £3,025.16 in the last three months. But that brings us £3,000 closer to the six-figure mark again. I've only hit that once and it was last April. So I'm very keen to get back into six-figure territory again. Although it probably won't last very long until BlockFi officially announced that my money is gone and then I'll be back down by approximately £16,000 that I'll need to make up. Anyway, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this is for educational purposes, so people can get an insight into what I'm investing in, a bit of inspiration, a bit of inspiration on what not to invest in maybe. I find these types of videos interesting when other people do them, so I hope you found this one interesting too. Thank you as always for watching, and the next portfolio update will be in January, where I'll do an annual one comparing this coming January to January 2023. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see that one and I'll see you next week. Take it easy.